everyone, and welcome to The Connect Show. I am Charlene Osterling, one of your guests. Today is episode number five, season four, and today we're diving into the extraordinary world of small business owners. They're not always recognized for their efforts, and I can't wait to share their incredible stories with you. <laughs> All right, just learning the clicker. Hello, everyone. I'm Dottie Posto. I am a leadership development coach and a leadership a leadership development consultant and coach. Wow. And I can't talk this morning. And I specialize in coaching uh, all leaders, but specialize in coaching leaders who've gotten that does not play well with others on the report card just a few too many times. As uh, a friend of mine helped me uh, tag it is when your MVP is an ASS. Whoa. <laughs> nice. Whoa. Yes. Okay. Yes. So OMG. more on that later, <laughs> more on that another time. Uh, imagine strolling through your neighborhood and passing charming cafes, one of a kind boutiques. What makes it even more amazing behind each storefront is a small business owner pouring their heart into their dream. Soak up this inspiration. Remember, they infuse the world with creativity and love. Celebrate these everyday heroes. And hi, everyone. I'm Tom, or Thomas, who want to call me right by my right name. We work on that a little bit sometimes. Thomas. I'm really excited to be here. Very thankful for the opportunity to be here and talk to everybody. A little bit about me. I've uh, been a technology geek, nerd, guru, whatever version of that derisive term you want to use. And uh, since I was a little boy and uh, through 60 years of working through tech, I, you know, I don't look that old, do I? But, but I no, have been. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> but through 60 plus years of, of handling uh, IT technology from before, before the days of Apple and IBM, those guys. Uh, and I made a left turn, a hard left turn about two years ago into the stories project. Now I'm the executive director of this nonprofit, spend my time talking to people, doing video recordings of uh, people in their lives. And we'll hear a little bit more about that later on. And that's, that's who I am today. And I'm happy to be here. It's just an amazing, amazing place and an amazing group of people. Yes, it is. In every episode, we showcase small business owners who are more than just entrepreneurs. They are courageous visionaries and community architects. From an early morning brews, wholehearted dedication, they aim to make a difference. Join us today and witness their incredible journey on our show. These entrepreneurs craft a breathtaking tapestry of determination. From humble, humble beginnings in their garages or living rooms, they blossom into creators of thriving enterprises. Their odyssey is a testament to unyielding resilience, turning obstacles into victories. With sleeves rolled up and hearts ablaze, they embody unwavering dedication, fueling their passion and fueling our passion and inspiring us to chase our dreams just as relentlessly. And before we move on to today's show, so we want to give you a little background about the show. We started in 2021, two full years ago in a small studio. I've been in a studio. I have closets at home bigger than that. The Connect Show is now in its fourth season. This is episode six of our brand new season, and we are very excited about what, what's in, what was that about? What's in the works for the Connect Show moving <laughs> forward? I don't believe in scripts. <laughs> the guests and hosts on the show are all volunteers. If you would like to be a guest or a host on the show, the process is pretty simple, and we'll teach you all the steps, the benefits, getting in front of the camera, using the clicker, Dottie. <laughs> becoming a skilled interviewer, and best of all, promoting your business. So please contact us to get your spot on the show. While The Connect Show is a show created by volunteers, we also are looking for your support to keep the show growing. Sponsorship on The Connect Show is a great way to get your business seen and support your peers. It can be a commercial, plugs in the newsletter, social media, or on the website. If you're interested in being a sponsor, please contact John or Tracy at info, I-N-F-O, at theconnectshow.com. And thank you to our hosting sponsor, this expansive workspace, from which is where we're at right now, 
from where we broadcast the Connect Show. Expansive is a wonderful place to work and a great community to be a part of. And in addition to Expansive, we have many other local businesses that support the Connect Show. And we thank each and every one of them as well. We really need to give a special thanks. I'm so happy I always get this, always. <laughs> to MKE Video, AKA the great John Taylor, the visionary who creates the show the with back, all the, the video back, work back, and editing. He's like the great Oz. We never see him. <laughs> and behind the curtain. John also has a new community called the Mind Body Abundance platform that you can see more of in the link on the screen. John has a quick video to show the mind body abundance world. Take it away, John. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? Okay, so <laughs> I guess I guess the video was uh, having a little bit of a technical difficulty there. Gee, if only, don't technical guy, if, I only if only uh, yeah, oh, if only and as always, we are very thankful that you have come to watch The Connect Show. If you have a topic that you think we'd be, would be interesting, that you think we should be discussing, please email us at ideas at theconnectshow.com. And today we are so excited to welcome our guests. That's Victoria Thayer and Christina or Tina Holcomb. This is relationship-based accounting and therapy for a sensitive segment of the population are very important services needed in our community. So thank you. We will talk with them a little later on. The Connect Show is better when interactive, so please add your comments to the chat on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. It's easy to find us. We will bring up your comments in addition to the conversation. This is a great opportunity to get expert advice to help your business grow. That's very true. I've actually left comments and put questions in there when I was viewing from home. And thanks again to last week's guests, brother and sister team, Nicole Schmidt and Megan and Rodrigo Gregoric, making custom furniture to your customers specifications and making, I told you, spec, customer specs and making sure they are happy with the result and making sure to pay your employees fairly are two sides of the same coin that they talked about. And I get the honor of saying the quote of the day, if you don't take care of your customer, your competitor will. And that's by Bob Huey. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of Huey, isn't it? I don't know if it is it really hooey though. I don't know. I think it's kind of the truth. I think so. I mean, what are competitors doing? I've been a competitor of other people, always looking for my 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 best uh, con connections were always to people who were unhappy with where they're with right now. You know, those were like low hanging fruit when you're a competitor. So don't 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 grow those kind of apples. <laughs> it, it does make me think though of Kim, who isn't here today. Her famous quote is collaboration not competition and so i look at you know i sat next to at a recent networking event someone who is in my industry and it, my first thought was hey let's talk because you know how can we collaborate how can we because there's no one business that's going to serve every leader in the world not only that but even let's say we do the same thing we have different energies yes. and people are exactly. energy driven, whether they know it or not, subconsciously or consciously. So you're drawn to certain things mm -hmm. and somebody could be the best in the industry, but if you're not in alignment with them or not drawn to them, then you are going to look for someone that you are because that's relational. And although it's great to get out of the box, you start first by what you feel drawn to. Yes. Well, you kind of go with something that uh, is in a Dale Carnegie thing that I've learned too. And that's, People will do business with people they like, right? And really every business is a relationship business in one form or another, right? Exactly. So, you know, you're when you're the salesperson talking to a potential customer or an existing customer, you are the company to that person, right? So if you don't get along with them, maybe someone else will. And, and there's a certain room for collaboration too. I've, I've done that quite a bit, but you also make sure that you, you kind of make some, some guidelines and some rules between you some agreements, let's say. Mm -hmm. It also makes me think of the um, question of, you know, what does taking care of your customers look like? So we're gonna actually leave you with that for this moment. 
uh, to think about that. What does it look like to take care of your customers? And then we'll move right into our question of the day, which we will answer and we will also ask of our guests today, which is cold calling or relationship building, which I refer to as building social capital in order to get customers, which do you prefer? And does the type of business or industry matter when deciding on which one to leverage? Definitely. I, I personally don't call cold call people, but I'm one of my gifts is being a connector. So, um, and my business is very fun and funky. When you have a business called a stupid good world and stupid good food, <laughs> it's like, or I'll wear a tag that says SGF productions and people will say, what is SGF? I'm like, stupid good food. And it draws them right in. So there are times when I'm drawn to something that I just pick up the phone and I'm like, this is going to sound crazy. But so I've done cold calling, but the cold calling element is like really getting on the phone every single day. And so for me, I've had a better um, trajectory with building the relationships when I'm drawn to, to paying attention to what I'm led to do. And then I connect with those people. There are very few people who are comfortable with cold calling. Um, although there's been a, someone else who's been a guest on this show, Paul Newberger, who is the cold calling guru coach. So he, he swears by it, but I'm kind of more like you. I'm not, I'm not so much a cold caller. Um, you know, that you want that introduction in a, in a situation or in an environment where people are kind of expected to be talked to. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of networking, networking groups, those types of things. Uh, and if, if I walk up to someone I don't know, they're not embarrassed or offended or going to tell me to get, well, they do tell me to get lost, but they're not going to tell me to get <laughs> lost right away at least, right? So, um, so I think it's pretty common for people to, to kind of move away from cold calling. Nobody likes to and, be rejected. And I've done either. a little bit of both. If you call, like I'll reach out to people on LinkedIn who I'm not connected with yet. If I think that they could be a really great contact or if I've seen something, like there's a company that I read about in the Milwaukee Business Journal and I so want to cold call them because I really, they are on a trajectory right now where I really think that they're going to need some leadership development because their business is just in an explosive. What you so, want to do when you do make that initial connection is say why you thought they're a good connection for you. Give them a reason. Yes. Other than, other than just, hey, I want to add to my, my number of connectors I've got. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I do know someone, I'm connected with someone and I work with them on LinkedIn uh, processes and he cold calls. And part of it is, is because of the people that he's trying to reach, it would just be really difficult for him to actually make a personal connection with every single one of them. And his offer is so good. Yeah. And it's, you know, a free trial kind of to start. And so it, it works for him. He just. So does it matter what type of business or industry you're into, whether cold calling or not? I think it does. I, I would never want to be cold would, calling and be a telemarketer. I, you know, yeah, I would agree car warranties that. or things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it definitely does. I mean, we're in an era now where things have changed so much. Whenever I make a call to a business, the first thing I say is, Hey, how are you? And there is like crickets on the phone because people aren't expecting, <laughs> right. you know, it's they're it's all business and they get on the phone and they're and they, it makes them stop and you can actually hear them smile and be like, Oh, somebody friendly's on the phone or it's yeah. not somebody, yeah. I, a client I trained this morning, it hates being within her business. Now she wants to run the business because since 2020, she said people are rude. They think that you're subservient to them. And it's just a whole really? different era. Uh, and she's in the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. So I think you're right. There is a, there's a time and there's a business that will thrive more in cold calling. But again, people tr are attracted to that energy. And if you're not on the phone being friendly and saying hello, and people yeah. don't think you're trying to sell them something I think, right I think away. If you're in, if you're talking to someone who's in what I call like the soft businesses, not like selling shoes and nuts and bolts and things, but selling services like, like, like we all do here. You know, I think, I think you have a better chance with cold calling. I, I think in this type of business, because people, the other businesses, there's so many people cold calling 
that people are kind of immune to that. They don't like that. As soon as they get catch on to what you're saying, they're like, sorry, I'm not interested. See you later. Or just, or just, just click. And the yeah. amount of spam calls that come through now. Oh, right, just, right. They're insanity. insanity. They're insane. My husband's <laughs> constantly like, ignore, yeah. ignore. But if you're ignore, talking to someone ignore. who's in kind of a service business, like in a call, a soft business like that, they, they expect to, to hear something like that. They're, or at least they're a little bit more open. At least that's that's been my, my experience. Right? Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the relationship building, it was interesting because this woman I, I know calls it social capital. Oh, yeah. You know, you're building For social that. capital. Mm -hmm. you've, you've got to build that relationship, the no like and trust, you mm -hmm. know, that people want to people want to be able to have that connection and know. So refer, whether that's through referrals or through, you know, meeting face to face or however it is, building that relationship. So now first. if you do a cold calling, are you? Are you cold calling to sell or are you cold calling to set up a meeting? Oh, to set up a connection call, yeah, just to connect first and let's just, you know, get to know each other a little bit because then you can start to see if there is an energy match. Yeah, sure. And then you it know. does matter what kind of business you're talking about, too. Oh, for sure. Because yeah. I'm like this fun, funky front with <laughs> uh, healthy healing, everything, products, services, food. So it, for me, it's you really have to know your your who you're calling. I can't just well, know your market, especially pretty, in Wisconsin, that's... the cheese capital of the world. It's like, <laughs> yeah, okay. We're not the fun capital of the world. I don't, I haven't heard that. No, but... I haven't either. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, sometimes. I don't think so. It's necessarily the case. <laughs> so as always, John is here running everything behind the scenes and making us all look good. John, do we have any comments in the chat? Hello from Las Vegas from Kim. I just met Oprah Knock. <laughs> what? <laughs> no way. Oh my gosh, I'm jealous. Nice. Talk about energy. <laughs> yeah, like insane energy. Yeah. I mean, all those hundreds of people that we know aren't, aren't making chat uh, your comments right now for us. Come What's on, the matter? What's on. the matter with you people? Come on, get on it. You've got a job to do. So, so do we. I mean, we're not doing this for our own good, you know. Or are we? Maybe we are. I think it's. I think we are. 50, 50. Never, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we do it for our own entertainment. <laughs> that too. Never a dull moment here. Never a dull moment. Dottie cannot speak. Um, <laughs> today we have a very special segment from the Mind Body Abundance on manifestation and using the one command with Sunny Boehm. I'm so excited to be here with you today and really happy to have a longtime friend and colleague. Sunny Boehm with me today. Hi. Hi. I'm so glad to be here. Sunny's a transformational coach, and she has touched so many lives, including mine, that um, I'm just happy to have her here to share with you some of the powerful work that she does. And when I invited you on the show, I asked you to think about how you could tell our viewers about one thing they can do to change their lives in 10 minutes or less? Well, one of the most powerful things that I've um, learned within the past 10 years and incorporated with all of my clients is something called One Command. And it helps people get very, very clear in a very short amount of time about what they want to manifest in their lives because most people spend so much time whining and complaining about what they don't have and what they're scared about and fearful about that they keep manifesting more of that mm -hmm. so when you get clear about what you want you can attract it very quickly and you can see the results and see how much more powerful you are yep and later in the segment you're going to help us I learn how, how to do this. Yes. But for now, um, let's tell the viewers a little bit more about you. How did you get started doing this work? Well, I had gotten a master's degree in psychology. And then when I started doing some of the practicum, I realized that I couldn't stand listening to people go, wham, wham, boo hoo, I hate my life, give me some drugs. And I thought, I'm like way too positive and way too chittery and chirpy and happy and really depressed people kind of like I bug them. So I really wanted to work with people who were high functioning and wanted their lives to get even better. Or even if they were dragging their anchors in the sand, they wanted to make a change and they were willing to be invested in it.
Thank you, Sunny, for that deep insight and tips to get improvement in the mindset. Her stuff really works. Like, I know her. I've done her work. <laughs> Let's welcome our first guest, Victoria Thayer. Welcome. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for the invite. It was a pleasure coming. Sure. Yes. Born in Venezuela with Ecuadorian heritage, Vicki Thayer grew up in a world vastly different from her current reality. Raised by a single mother, her family's financial circumstances seemed destined to follow a familiar path. Her mother and grandmother worked as maids, but Victoria was determined to change the trajectory of her family's future. The experience she gained in the field fueled Victoria's desire to establish her own CPA firm and collaborate with small and medium-sized business owners. In 2023, she launched Novi CPA, offering relationship based outsourced accounting and tax services to entrepreneurs. Why do I get the sentences that have like, you know, five <laughs> syllable words every single one of them? In addition to her professional endeavors, Victoria is act actively contributes to various organizations. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And thank you for giving that amazing introduction. Again, th thank you. Sure. Yes. Let's revert back to the question of the day for you. Yes. So cold calling or relationship building? Oh, relationship building, 100%, <laughs> yes. So and what, so why? Tell me why. So for me, I think that financial services, like when we think about numbers and the economy for families, that is something that is very close to their heart. It means a lot. It means stability. They don't want to just do it with a person that doesn't really care that for them, they're just like a transaction, one more that they have to like do business with. It's almost like a doctor, like you want to trust them. You want to know that they're watching out for you for your best interest. So in order to gain that trust, you need to build on that relationship. You need to be able to create that connection with them and they need to be comfortable about it because you're seeing their whole picture because like the services that I provide, it's not only about their businesses, but also about their individual aspect too, because they are a whole. Like we cannot just look at the business without looking at their financial situation as an individual, as in a family. So they'll, they're out there vulnerable. Mm -hmm. They're saying like, hey, this is my cash flow. I don't know if I will make it next month. So in order for them to come to you and say that, they need to be able to have that trust and feel that they, there is a safe space in here. And I'm here not to judge, but to help you get to a better spot. So yeah, definitely relationship. <laughs> I think that last point is so critical in terms of no judgment and, and really safe. I remember I had one accounting firm that I worked with who I had like no connection with, none whatsoever. And then the next one, it took a little while and there were, you know, finally I did get to the point and Charlene knows me, I'm pretty bold. <laughs> I'm usually, I'm usually not afraid to ask things, but when it comes to my money and what I think I know or don't know, especially things I don't know about accounting and finance, mm -hmm. I took accounting in college. I got an A and I hated every moment of it. And I never understood a bit of it, but I got me. I don't know how, but you know, but, but being in that safe space was so right. critical for me to be able to go to my accountant and say, okay, I need some time with you because I don't understand this, this, and this. Absolutely. And, and something else that I'm seeing too, is like with startup businesses, again, they don't know what they don't know, like you're saying. And sometimes they feel that they're going to be judged if they ask a question that they're supposed to know, Hey, I didn't register for sales tax. Oops. Am I, you know, mm -hmm. they don't want to look like, they're like silly. Um, and that's about creating the safe space. Like, no, this is all new to you. You're supposed to have all these questions. So yes, to, to your point that I'm, and I'm glad you found one that now you have that connection with. Yeah. Yes. So tell us, Victoria, what yeah. are your tips for entrepreneurs to set up their business accounting mm -hmm. as a startup business? What are your, what are your hot tips? So some of my hot tips is when you decide to start your own business, first of all, separate those accounts. Do not commingle the personal with the business because it gets like very messed up. And then it is very hard for your accountant and for yourself to be able to tell which one is which. Also from a legal standpoint too, it is better to keep everything separate. Um, so that's the first thing. Even if you're a solopreneur and you're not creating a different entity, like an LLC, you can be just like a freelancer. It is a good habit to go and open a different personal account that is you're only going to use for the business. 
the accounting becomes like more easy peasy because then all everything that's coming in and everything's coming out, you know that it is for the business. So that's like the first thing. The second thing is that you need to use an accounting software. Now, accounting software may sound too fancy and you're like, oh, but I'm just a freelancer. I'm just doing this like in the side. That's okay. Like an accounting software can be something like Wave, for example. Wave is a great resource for um, entrepreneurs that are just starting. It's free. You can connect your bank accounts. Everything you comes into it, you just have to like categorize the transactions. So it's very, very easy to learn. And again, it is better than having everything in a paper because again, you never know it gets misplaced or something like that. So again, like trying to think about like a way to organize your accounting, even if you're a solopreneur, it is very important when you are like preparing your taxes and as well for making informed decisions throughout your entrepreneurship journey. Um, so that would be tip number two. Like if you're more robust though, I will highly suggest QuickBooks Online that offers like a, a robust way of like reports and more more tools that you can benefit from. I will say the third tip, tip that you need to think about is like thinking that every year can be different than the prior. So not because you were an L, like a sole proprietor on prior year means that this is the best strategy for this year. So whoever you're working with for your tax accountant, bring up these questions. Like, am I still good as a sole proprietor or should I now become an S corporation? Because every year will change. Um, so again, like thinking that no, because you did something last year, you, it's not gonna change. No, we need to look again at things every year. The, uh, I guess it will be the fourth, fourth. tip. Yeah, um, <laughs> it will be that to look into um, pass-through entity. Pass-through entity, um, a structure for like the state level can allow you to save taxes in the state level again because we have like limitations about how much state taxes you can deduct in an individual level that is another great thing to look at are you taking advantage of those um and again just opening up the conversations with your tax preparer your accountant you know this is that's the safe space where you're like okay this is what's going on this is like, let's look at it. What is like the best course of action for the entire year? And another thing that I always recommend is like, let's be proactive about it. Let's treat the patient while it's sick instead of being like, oh, it's the end of the year. Here's my shoebox, and it already happened. So then it's like, man, at that point, it's like an autopsy. Like it's already <laughs> dead. There is nothing for the accountant to do. It's like, oh, well, I wish we had this conversation earlier. Uh, but so, yeah, so again, be proactive, ask questions. And again, like ideally your accountant should be the one like initiating um, these conversations. But if not, you can take the first step and, and, and open up those conversations. Yeah. So you're not passionate about this at all, are you? Oh, no, no. I find it pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because so many people do like they get in business to have a paycheck to make money. And it's like, you are like the epitome of what makes you different in an industry where there's so many people out there that yeah. are just mm -hmm. like, I just do the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> just give me the shoe box. <laughs> yeah, no. And I, mm -hmm. I think it's a great point that you said that the accountant should be bringing up some of this right. stuff because when you said, should I be a this? Should I be a sole proprietor? Right. Should I be an S corp? I didn't even know about S Corp until my accountant mentioned it. Right. I'm like, you're the expert here. Explain it in like third grade language and see if it'll make sense to me. Cause <laughs> you know, granted I'm, you know, I got a master's degree, but <laughs> <laughs> on accounting, I need third grade level. I need it broken down to the third grade well, level. To your point, you don't know, right? So yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't even get me started on that one. I know, business, I know, but... and she's so passionate about it all. Even the software, like, oh, there's this great, uh, like, yeah, <laughs> QuickBooks. I, in fact, I just, I went, I had a meeting with my accountant recently, and I'm like, okay, explain to me what you're doing in here, because I think I should know at least a little bit of what's going on in yeah. here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, no. So, so yeah. No. It. We need to be proactive about it. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so, will switching from an mm -hmm. LLC to an S corp save you money? Like what, what's the... It will, it will depend. So we have to look at your specific situations. There will be like different moving parts into it that your accountant can walk you through. But um, after certain levels, moving from a sole proprietor, like a Schedule C in your 1040 to an S corporation can save you taxes because you're not paying payroll taxes, self-employment tax, and the entire net income. But again, we're looking at the entire kind of like your whole um, tax situation. But we need to look at that. It's something that like it's worth 
discussing it with your accountant. Yes, because it's, it's possible that you can save a lot of money that way. Yes. And I actually did that a couple of years ago, switched from an yes. LLC to an S corp. So yeah, that's very confusing at first. <laughs> I was like, whatever, you get it. But he's like, it's going to save you this much money. Okay, do it. Yeah. Then let's do it. <laughs> so, yeah. and you had talked through talked about the pass through entity in our notes. It said PTE. I'm like PTE. What what on earth is PTE? <laughs> how does that how does that save how does that save money? Yes, yeah, so the pass-through entity election is an election that they opened up in the state level so that, for example, in your case, your S-corporation can elect to be paying taxes in the entity level instead of the you as an individual. So what that allows is that then those taxes that you're paying for Wisconsin, for example, become a deduction for the federal. Because otherwise, if you're paying in your individual level, remember, like we have the salt limits. The salt limits are like the state uh, limitation that we have for like when we do like a Schedule A, which is like the itemized deductions. We have a max of ten thousand, which almost everyone hits that with just normal withholdings and paying like the real estate taxes. So that allows you to take a benefit of the taxes that you're paying the state level to Wisconsin. Yeah. So something, yeah, something to look into it. I'm going to have to ask and see if my business is set up as a PTE. Yeah. Nice. Make the election, yeah. <laughs> so what is the one tip you can give us that you know will change our business and why would, the, why would a business implement that? I will say that the tip number one will be, and it may not really be accounting related, but kind of is, it is about finding the right team. And by right team, I mean like mentors too. So that's also why we outsource an accountant or like a marketing firm or a leadership coach is because again, like we are trying to have that extensions of ourselves because time is limited. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I could learn everything about CRMs and all of that marketing strategies, but I, that's not my, I'm also like very like a third grader with all that stuff. So, um, so again, like finding those mentors that can tell you and share their experiences and can really help you move forward. So I think that that's one of my, my main tips is like finding those mentors out there and people are so generous with their time mm -hmm. and their experience that, you know, that they're out there, go network, connect, create those relationships. Yes. Mm -hmm. So much on relationship building. It is, yes. you know, and those mm -hmm. relationships upward are so critical, whether you're in, a large business, you know, a large corporation in a medium sized business, you know, look at what other businesses, you know, are doing someone who's been around the block a few times, or even somebody that's new, you know, somebody who might have a fresh perspective that mm -hmm. might give you fresh eyes on the, on what you're doing mm -hmm. and how you're doing it. Yes. All right. Learning great accounting tips from relationship accountant is the way to go. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today, Victoria. Do you Thank have you. an offer or an event or anything you'd like to share with the audience? Today? Um, we don't have any event coming up, but we are accepting new clients. So if you have issues with accounting or taxes, feel free to reach out. And I love to connect. Uh, find me on LinkedIn. Uh, and I always am um, there sharing a lot of tips and information. So yes. <laughs> okay. And we also have a page for mm -hmm. Victoria on our website, on the Connect Show website. So if you go to theconnectshow.com mm -hmm. forward slash Victoria Thayer, T-H-A-Y-E-R. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. Do I stand up? And the second small business segment of the day with Thomas starts now. Okay. Well, so it's my turn now. So I'm, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the Stories Project, which is the, the big change that I made to my life uh, about two years ago. Just a little bit of background. I've been doing IT for many years. As I and I'm born and raised in Chicago.
which is a small country up in the Scandinavian area, part of the Soviet Union. Those things about her life would made me kind of look back at how I had been with her and reevaluate that quite a bit. So um, it was it was time for me to, to, to do some changes. So I thought about that and realized lots of people had the same kind of situation as I did. They didn't know the details of their family history. And that's where the stories project came from. So uh, I have a little video here that uh, kind of introduces a little bit and shows you some things about it. So um, Master John. Here we go. Hi, let me tell you about the Stories Project. The Stories Project is a nonprofit organization. And our mission is to talk to people and get their life stories, the stories that they may not tell everybody and get them before they're gone forever. We videotape an interview with these people and we give them a full copy of the interview, unedited raw that they can give to their family for future generations. So that people later on in life, after these people are gone and the stories would have otherwise been lost forever, they can show them to their great grandchildren and future generations after that. So they have some idea where they came from and what their ancestry is all about. How many times have you talked to someone and they've said, gee, I wish I had recorded my mom or my dad before they passed and gotten their stories because they did some amazing things. Well, that's what this is all about is to capture that before it's too late. The Stories Project has been a great, great opportunity for me to get to know people and learn about where they came from. And we take this information and we edit it and we post it online so the whole world can see these things. This isn't just for us. This is for everyone to see because these are not just family treasures, but these are treasures for all of us to see. So for people who are gonna see this, never have gotten an opportunity to meet you until now. So they'll have an opportunity to meet you any message you just want to toss out there for the masses? Be happy on purpose. Oh, I like that. Back with our second guest, Christina or Tina Holcomb. Thank you. Christina graduated from the University of Wisconsin Parkside with a bachelor's in psychology in 2005 and Marquette University with a master's in counseling psychology in 2008. Christina has been a therapist for 15 years and has worked with a myriad of population with a specialization in sexual abuse, sexual deviance and dysfunction, as well as trauma, and abuse therapy, anger management, couples therapy, family reunification, intimacy issues, and sex addiction. Tina began her therapy work in sex offender rehabilitation therapy in the community, eventually transitioning to run the only program of its kind in the state of Wisconsin out of the Racine Correctional Prison for stir event. Stir event. Jeez, you think you have rough words? One. It's That's a city word just south. Day. It's a city Jeez. south of here. I got that one. I used to go to the train in Sturdivant all the time. I got that one. There you go. <laughs> Anywhere for nine, for nine years. <laughs> this program was designed to help sexual offenders on probation around the state who were showing signs of high risk rehabilitative in the intensive 11 week inpatient program at the prison. This program was shut down at the start of the pandemic, and Christina went into private practice for several years virtually before accepting the role as a clinical director in Greenfield, Wisconsin Clinic for Nystrom and Associates. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, back to our question of the day. Mm. Cold calling, 
<laughs> I think I know the answer to this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cold calling or relationships just, just skip in order to get customers. Like, which sure. Do you like, which you prefer? <laughs> and I'm I'm very curious for you to answer both from your perspective with what you did with the prisons. Yeah as well as what you're doing now. Okay, fair enough, yeah, yeah. Well, just to speak to the overall picture of cold calling versus building relationships. Clearly, when you're talking about the mental health community, you really wanna build relationships. It would be awkward to just call somebody and be like, do you feel like you need counseling? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> Um, but I do think that we do actually at Nystrom do some ability, some degree of actual cold calling community outreach where we'll go out to places that might need the referrals for mental health, like psychiatric facilities or treat, you know, rehabilitation treatment programs that might need that follow up and we'll take them out information and let them know, Hey, look, we're here if you need somewhere that you can get clients into because Right now, I mean, in the mental health industry, there's a five plus month wait for mental health. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, depressed, and somebody says, well, we'd be happy to help you in six months, um, that can be a little overwhelming. So that's one of the big selling points for Nystrom is that we have immediate openings, you know. So we have done some cold calling to sort of let other community resources, but when it comes to the actual direct patient connection, you have to build that relationship and we find that with a lot of people, especially when they have come and had a good experience, they'll talk to their friends and say, hey, you know, I really trust this counselor. I really trust this company. They took care of me. They were very people centered, very ethical. With relationship to the prison, that's a little different. Uh, all of that was people on probation. So they were what we would call an involuntary population, as in they didn't <laughs> want to be in therapy. Yeah. Um, so there was really no cold calling, but building the relationship, I did actually find more times than not that people who didn't want to be in therapy then wanted to be in therapy and in fact would stay, you know, in private therapy even after they didn't have to be anymore because I had turned it around for them and they went from feeling like this was an imposition to something that actually helped them. So what are the main modalities you use in the clinic? Yeah, absolutely. Well, our clinic, we do a lot of, as you would call, talk therapy. We use um, a cognitive behavioral base. We use other treatment modalities as well as needed, sort of mix them together to create what would be best for each client. Some need more of a solution focus. You know, they want to say, okay, here's what I'm dealing with, but what are we going to do to fix this, right? Some people, we have to do the, you know, go back do sort of a psychoanalytical and talk about like, well, where did all this start for you? Like, what are the root causes of this? You know, for most people, it's a mix of ment multiple modalities. Say that five times fast. <laughs> there you go. Um, leather, yellow leather. And yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. Mixed modality. Mixed modality. Um, and we also do med management as well in the clinic. So most of it is outpatient therapy where you would talk to and we do virtual mm -hmm. and in person. So for a lot of people I've found since the pandemic, you know, <laughs> virtual therapy was virtually non-existent before 2020. Um, but since the pandemic, a lot of people feel more comfortable with virtual therapy where they can just be in their own home, in their own comfort zone versus coming to a clinic. So we do both, yeah. I'm gonna go off script a little bit here. I have a question for you. Do you include any somatic re-experiencing or somatic therapies in your Sometimes therapies? when necessary with certain clients, but that's a very specific thing that we would sort of say, okay, okay. is this helpful in their trauma? Is this helpful? Okay. And that would be the kind of thing we would evaluate per client based on both their desires. I have some clients that come to me and they say, I wanna do you know, DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy. I wanna do this and so I always say to them like, let's be open to multiple approaches but we will focus it on what you wanna focus it on. So if a client was to come to me wanting to do that for sure. Otherwise okay. we, would, we would judge it on a case by case basis, but yes. Okay. And what, uh, what, what's, do you, is there a typical, um, that the question is what, but I, I guess part of the question is, is there a typical progression of treatment sessions that you go through with a client? Yeah, absolutely. So in our first session with new clients, we generally do 
a complete diagnostic assessment. I always call it the picking apart of your entire life. We go back and we talk about everything you've experienced. Let's talk about your family. Let's talk about current relationships. Let's talk about things you've experienced in the past. Let's talk about any traumas you've had. Let's talk about any struggles with maybe drug or alcohol or other substances you've had. Let's talk about what brought you to the therapy today and how that's tied to things that you've experienced in the past. So that would generally be the first session. The second one, we create uh, a full treatment plan, essentially where I sit down with the client and I say, okay, here's what I've heard in your diagnostic assessment. What do you feel would be measurable goals that we could put down and reassess every three months that you would like to work on? Sometimes clients may have trouble wording this. So I will help them and I'll say, well, does this sound like what you'd like to work on? Based on what we've talked about, this sounds like something that you're struggling with. Let's word it in a way that not only is it something you want to work on, but we always want it to be measurable. If you say, I just want to feel better. Okay. Well, that's great. <laughs> so what does that look like? Right. Exactly. So we will look at very measurable goals and then we reassess with the client every three months on that treatment plan. And then the third and forward sessions are more like the, the typical open session where you would just come in and talk to your therapist. But we always tie the goals in every time and discussing how those are impacting your day-to-day -day life. So I would assume it's different for everyone you see, but what's, what's like a, a typical time spread yeah. that you're looking at for to give people what they need to either move forward on their own or see if, the, if it's helping, like how do we advance that? Yeah, that's a really good question. So it depends. What I find are sometimes like the transition of life clients, they may only need two or three sessions. And when I say transition of life, I don't mean death. I mean like people who are going off to college or people going through a divorce or mm -hmm. people who are just, you know, having their first child and becoming parents and things are changing in their life. I get a lot of kids who are students who are just going off to college, a lot of stress, anxiety, things related to leaving home, being on their own. And they'll generally be more of a short-lived client where we can resolve it and sometimes even as little as three to five sessions. And they're like, I feel much better, thank you. And then you have clients that are more trauma-based that are going to take longer. I always use the phrase, um, Rome wasn't built in a day, so you can't remodel it in a day. <laughs> um, but that's really, you know, for a lot of the people who have deeper traumas or deeper, longer lasting struggles, oftentimes we'll see a year, two years of therapy. Mm -hmm. um, what does often typically happen, though, is they'll start out with like weekly sessions. And then after a few months, they're like, I'm feeling significantly better. I'm not ready to let go of that lifeline just yet. But let's move it to biweekly or monthly sessions or even some clients I see every other month. So it really varies greatly mm -hmm. depending on each client. But I think that typically, usually a year, you know, is the standard. Yeah. So some of the uh, life transition clients, are you then seeing them virtually? Some of them are virtual. Some come in person. Yeah, absolutely. Right now I mean, we're like after like a kid goes off to college oh, yeah. and then. Yep. They have that. They have that. They do have that option to continue virtually. We've had some clients that have been in office, and then they've you know moved. We do have to see them in the state where we're licensed. But if they move to a different part of the state or they go off to college, we can absolutely continue to see them virtually. So if they're off to college in a different state, you can't support no, them. No, uh -uh. mm, interesting. It's, okay. it, yeah, it's an interesting piece where the client has to be in the state that you're licensed in. Most okay. of our therapists are duly licensed in Minnesota and in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So we can see populations in either state. Um, if they were to go to a state that like I wasn't licensed in, they would have to like mm -hmm. come back to Wisconsin for the session mm -hmm. <laughs> or Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And what makes your, what makes your business stand out? Why, why do people love Nystrom and Associates? Is it Nystrom and Associates? Yes. Associates. Why do they love you as a counselor? Why do they love the business? What's what makes it stand out? What makes it sure, unique? Sure. Well, let me speak to Nystrom first. I think one of the things I like about Nystrom and other people have 
really voice that they enjoy is that they are big into, we have what we call our mission vision values. So our mission is that we really want to make sure everyone has the opportunity to be the ve- the best version of themselves, you know? And as a company, they really envision that everyone has access to the help they need and that it's a normal part of society, that it's considered a strength instead of a lot of the stigma that still exists regarding mental health today, where people feel like you, you know, you only go if you're crazy or you wait till everything's falling apart. We really as a company envision it as a normal part of your routine self-care and recognition of how to be the best version of yourself. Um, The other thing I really like about them is we use the acronym HOPE, humble, optimistic, people-centered, and empathetic. So it's all about the client. You know what I mean? It's really all about And I tell clients this all the time because I get clients that apologize to me. I get clients that'll cry and they'll apologize to me. And I said, look, I'm here. I'm a tool for you. I'm here to help you be the best you can be. So this is really all about you. As for me as a therapist, I've always been, I like to say I'm that sort of outside the box therapist. I, well, I guess I'd say I'm probably an outside the box human just in general. (laughs) In the club. Yeah, there you go. Are among, out of the box people. Yes. I hover around the box, but I generally don't get inside of it. So with every client, I take a different approach. I think you have to meet a person where they are. If I come in all stuffy and that's not who you are, it's going to be very off-putting. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If I come in too nonchalant and you're somebody who's looking for more of a formal therapy, that's also going to be off-putting. So just for me personally, my theory is I have to, I have to get to know who you are and then I adjust me to you. If that answers the question. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's Mm -hmm. really helpful. You know, it's not, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it would be inauthentic. It's more just a flex. It is. You know, I, I have this model that I use in my coaching where we have our core self, our developed self and our contextual self. And that contextual self is how we flex and, and change. Yeah you know, as long as we're resourced for it, which you, with all the resources you have, I'm sure are, to be able to be that, you know, more energetic when you need to, or more formal or more, you know, laid back with exactly. the student kind of person. Yeah, it's not inauthentic. It's just exactly as you said, a flexing of, I'm not not me. I'm just adjusting me to be somebody that you will be more comfortable with based on who you are. Yeah, it's just kind of a, an ebb and flow of Absolutely. different parts of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. So thank you for being there for those people that need you most. And thank you for being with us today. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Do you have any specials, offers, or anything coming up that you want people to know about? Well, so the first Friday in November, we're actually going to be hosting a chamber coffee event at our office, 4131 West Loomis in Greenfield. Anybody that wants to come, we're going to have an open house. We'll have snackies and coffee Um, and we will give a tour of the clinic. You can meet the therapist. So if anybody wants to come, come on down. 7.30 to 9. I guess it helps if I say the time, huh? (laughs) Awesome. And if you would like to know more, we have a connect show link backslash Christina Holcomb. So. Wow. Lots of cool stuff today. Yeah. I love how most times our guests aren't even related in what they do, but it's just like so amazing. I know they're, you know, such different ends. We have all the, we have, you know, Victoria, the numbers lady, the CPA, but relationship, they're connected through that whole relationship based business. I love the connect show. I love it. It's amazing. (laughs) We had all sorts of cool stuff today. All the tips. I mean, she had four or five tips. For us on oh, software, on accounts, she, on, she had, she was like, <laughs> pew, 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 pew. you know, if you didn't catch those, rewind, go back, listen to it again. And first Friday in November. Yep. 730 to 9. 730 to 9. 4131 North Loomis. It's not that far from me. No. I'm going to come, come get, get some, some free snacks. Sweet. Some free sweets. Mm-hmm. And with that, we are off to our new pie segment. Domas is going to tell us what that new pie segment is. All right, so 
This is the Connect show, right? So we're supposed to be connecting. We spent the morning talking about people in, in accounting. Please step forward. Come on, join in. <laughs> people in accounting, people with uh, behavioral mental health help, um, which obviously the three of us could probably use a lot of and for lots of different reasons. Um, and so now it's time for a little bit of a different thing. I think I just jumped on someone's segment here, but oh, what the heck. So it's time to go lighten this up a little, lighten the mood, get to something a little bit more to our fun part here. So please take it away. <laughs> okay. I'll just go with this. The new PI system is a brand new part of the Connect Show. And today is the very first day. PI stands for, well, PI, but it stands for Partners in Excellence. And every week we'll eat PI while spending time with excellent partners. We know everyone wants to have a piece of the pie. Sorry, Charlene. So don't miss these amazing new segments. Charlene, are you ready? <laughs> We're a team here at the Connect Show. Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden. So we are going to invite everyone over. Come on over. Thank you. Fill in. Domas, you can come fill in too. And today for our pie segment, we have with us Shelly J. Wiley and I'm Consuela. Consuela. Yeah. <laughs> and their business is Sweet Connie's Cafe. Yeah, just a little bit that I know. This <laughs> sounds like an amazing concept. I hope so. Um, well, Shelly and I are partners. I am Connie, so I'm the sweet part of the deal. The names. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm the sweetness. Um, but no, we are opening. Um, we have been blessed with the, the Old Spice House, the location of the Old Spice House in downtown Milwaukee, mm -hmm. where we open um, Breakfast and Brunch Cafe. Um, we have. I've been back in Milwaukee. Now I was born and raised here, mm. but I left 15 years ago to move to Germany, and I've been back two years and notice that um, some things aren't the way they used to be, don't taste the way they used to. So I bring, we wanted to bring you something sweet, something healthy, something tasty, but we're about healthy balance because I'm not anti-sugar by any means, but I also want to offer you an alternative to just bacon and eggs for breakfast and pancakes. So that's our plan, that's our mission, that's our goal. And um, yeah, I brought you pie. You're amazing. <laughs> so I tell know. us the location. <laughs> We will be um, in 1031 North um, MLK, Dr. MLK Drive. Mm -hmm. We are in the Old Spice House. So we are our next door to Oak Barrel Mater's. So we're right there on the- Directly in between. Directly in the middle of those. So um, we do plan on being open only for brunch hours to about 3 p.m. Okay. So we won't interfere with your with their party time. <laughs> and, and tell me more about what you brought. This yeah. so I did, what are we eating today? What are we you today? have, um, I made lemon meringue pie. And this is an apple pie I made this morning, so it's just to be warm. Um, this was just in case no one liked lemon, and then no one liked apple, but then you don't like anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say I don't like. No, anything, she, you just but... you have your. I wish I, I would have asked before. So, I'm not so you, you do fit special. People yeah, who, we do. We do make special. Optimal order. isn't this. Isn't, yes, exactly. Because I also find a lot of family members do have dietary, um, dietary mm -hmm. restrictions that you didn't know prior, mm -hmm. and so I um, am able to make diabetic friendly cakes. I do my. I do make the sweet Connie's um, concept. Let me say is that we want to offer so you know what you're eating. So our preserves, I will make everything we make in house. Ninety percent of it. Our preserves, our syrups, the pancake syrups, the butters, our whips, so you know what you're getting. The herbs. Um, the herbs that will be grown inside. So you'll see all of these things. You'll be able to touch them and taste them. Don't break them. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, a, you, technically, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's, um, so yeah, so we will have a bakery take, a bakery taken. Sorry, German will flit in there because I'll forget some yeah. English words sometimes. We would have a, um, a bakery counter to where I will be able to um, add sweets of different different tarts different pies different cakes but i guess also a healthy balance of a breakfast menu so that's our plan and hopefully we succeed at it oh there's no hopefully about it <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna cut the pie I just, I'll cut the pie since I baked them. I said, well, so I, Tony, if you're watching, so which one I'm you like? pie, you're not. <laughs> so everyone eats some pie. So we're going to, and I hope everyone likes the pie. I will have a taste of each. Oh, you are Why not? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I guess I'll cut the apple pie first. All right, so we're going to. It's gonna, still warm. I don't oh, nice. So you spent 15 years in Germany. 
Yes, I did, and Shelly was there alone. So not. while we're cutting the pie, next week, please join our show for Absolutely. Rochelle Gamoff and Tony Meister. Mm -hmm. Helping feed the community when they are in need is a noble cause, and showing the world what a brand's story showing the world a brand story, especially nonprofits, is a spectacular gift to the community. Finishing strong, just how you started, Dottie. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us on our show today. Please help our community grow by reaching out and inviting one person you feel would benefit from being a part of our journey. Please like and subscribe if you are on social. This little act goes a long way in our reach. And if you like something you saw, please comment and we will see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.